Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to story time. Are you ready to start? Well, we start by singing our hello song and it's called Bread and Butter. And if you don't know the words, it goes like this. All you have to do is say hello back. Ready? All right, here we go. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as quiet as we can. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as loud as we can. Hello! Oh, that one was so loud I could hear it from here. All right. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as slow as we can. Hello. What's the opposite of slow? Oh, that's right. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as fast as we can. That was pretty fast. All right, you need a squeaky mouse voice for the next one. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as high as we can. And then a Papa Bear voice. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as low as we can. Hello. And then your very last one, show off your best library manners. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as nice as we can. Hello boys and girls, welcome to story time. Are you ready? This one's by Kelly DiPuccio with pictures by Li Yun Pham. All right, here we go. We got some presidents. We've got Washington, Jefferson, Lincoln, Roosevelt, Kennedy, Obama, Roosevelt. It's a different Roosevelt, not the same Roosevelt twice, although they both did get reelected. All right, and most importantly, Grace. All right, here we go. On Monday morning in September, Mrs. Barrington rolled out a big poster with all of the president's pictures on it. Grace Campbell could not believe her eyes. Where are the girls? Where are the girls? That's a very good question, said Miss Barrington. The truth is, our country has never had a woman president. No girl president? Ever? Grace asked. No, I'm afraid not, said Miss Barrington. Grace sat at her desk and stewed. No girls? Who'd ever heard of such a crazy thing? Finally, she raised her hand. Yes, Grace. I've been thinking it over, and I'd like to be president. Several students in her class laughed. Well, I think that's a star-spangled idea, Grace, said Mrs. Barrington. In fact, we can have our own election right here at Woodrow Wilson Elementary. The snickering in the room stopped. Grace smiled. Would anyone else like to run for president? Mrs. Barrington asked the class. Nobody raised their hands. Becoming president was going to be easy, Grace thought. Do you think being president's easy? No way. And the next day, Mrs. Barrington made an announcement. In the name of democracy, I've invited Mr. Weller's class to join the election. Their class has nominated Thomas Cobb to be their presidential candidate. Grace's heart sank. Thomas was the school spelling bee champion. His experiments always took a blue ribbon at the science fair, and he was captain of the soccer team. Becoming president wasn't going to be easy after all, Grace thought. 
the teachers put the names of all 50 states and the District of Columbia into a hat. Everyone, except for Grace and Thomas, got to choose a state. So there's a map back here with all the states on it. And Mrs. Barrington and Mr. Waller are explaining that each state has a number. I'm Texas, said Anthony. I'm New Hampshire, said Rose. I'm Michigan, said Robbie. What does the number 16 mean? Each state is assigned a, num a number of electoral votes. That number is determined by how many people live in that state, said Mrs. Barrington. Each of you will be a representative for your state. All, to, all together, our country has 538 electoral votes, Mr. Waller explained. On election day, the candidate who receives 270 electoral votes or more wins the election. Why 270? asked Rose. Do you guys know why? 270 plus 270 is 540, right? Which is more than 538, which means that 270 is more than half of all the electoral votes, Mr. Waller, Waller said. Becoming president really wasn't going to be easy, Grace thought. Now there's math. All right, let's see what Grace does. Grace came up with a campaign slogan, make history, vote Grace Campbell for president. And then Thomas came up with his own slogan, vote for Thomas Cobb, the best man for the job. Thomas. Grace listened to what issues were important to the students and she made a list of campaign promises. A peaceful school, no bullies. A cleaner school, no littering, better hot lunches, no more fish stick tacos. Thomas made up his own list of promises, free tutoring, free soccer lessons, and fish stick tacos every week. Where do you guys land on the fish stick taco debate? I am anti fish stick tacos. I like fish sticks. I like tacos. I don't like them together. Is that enough to make up my mind for president? Let's keep reading and find out. All right, Grace made campaign posters and buttons and Thomas made posters and buttons too. Over here, we've got all the Grace posters and over there we have all the Thomas posters. Each week, the teachers set aside time for the candidates to meet with their constituents. That means the people they are representing, so their classmates. Polls were taken and voters were making their choices. Do you see something about the, the people who are lining up for Grace? The people who are lining up for Thomas? Looks like all the boys are listening to Thomas and all the girls are listening to Grace. Except for maybe this guy. It's always important to listen to what all of the people are talking about. Grace continued to campaign. At recess, she gave speeches. During lunch, she handed out free cupcakes. And after school, she had rallies. Here she is dressed like the Statue of Liberty. Looks like Grace is doing a lot of work. And meanwhile... Thomas wasn't worried. He had cleverly calculated that the boys held slightly more electoral votes than the girls. At recess, Thomas studied his spelling words, and during lunch, he worked on his latest science experiment, and after school, he played soccer. Even before the election, Grace made good on her promises. She joined the safety squad. She organized a school beautification committee. She volunteered in the school cafeteria. So here she is serving lunches and painting and with the safety committee and kissing babies. She did a lot of work. She's tired. 
In early November, Woodrow Wilson Elementary hosted a special election day assembly. Grace and Thomas took their places on stage. There's Grace and Thomas. And the school band began to play. Henry was the first representative to approach the microphone. The Yellowhammer State of Alabama casts its nine electoral votes for Thomas Cobb, Fletcher said. The last frontier state of Alaska casts its three electoral votes for the best man for the job, Thomas Cobb. The Grand Canyon state of Arizona casts its 11 electoral votes for Grace Campbell, Hannah called out. And so it went state after state casting their electoral votes. The scoreboard in the gymnasium kept track of the totals. And they each have their little state flag and they're dressed to represent their state. And here we have Miss Katie's favorite. The voting demonstration was quickly coming to the end and Clara approached the podium. The Badger State of Wisconsin casts its 10 votes for my best friend, Grace Campbell. And I don't know if you can see it in the picture, but Clara is wearing a Packers t-shirt, Miss Katie. Grace looked at the scoreboard. Thomas had 268 electoral votes. She had 267. There was only one state still unaccounted for, Wyoming. And he's holding a scale and his sash says equal rights. And there's a buffalo on his flag. Thomas grinned. Grace felt sick. Sam walked up to the microphone. He looked at Thomas. He looked at Grace. He looked down at Grace's handmade flag. Sam didn't say a word. What are you waiting for? Thomas whispered. The band stopped playing. All eyes were on Wyoming. Finally, Sam cleared his throat. <clears throat> the Equality State of Wyoming casts its three electoral votes for Grace Campbell. The gymnasium erupted into loud cheers and a few boos. Mrs. Barrington approached the podium with 270 electoral votes. The winner is Grace Campbell. Thomas looked stunned. Grace hugged Sam. Why did you do it? She asked. Sam handed Grace his flag because he said, I thought you were the right person for the job. The following weeks, students in Miss Barrington's class were preparing for career day presentations. Grace volunteered to go first. She stood at the front of the room and glanced at the poster still hanging on the wall. My name is Grace Campbell, and when I grow up, I'm going to be president of the United States. And this time, everyone believed that she would. And that is the end of Grace for President. And here is an imagining of Grace as a grown up getting sworn in at the Capitol. And this one also has some more information on how the Electoral College works if you're interested. And there's Grace on Mount Rushmore. I don't think that's gonna happen, but you never know. I hope you enjoyed Grace for President. We have lots more books by Kelly DiPuccio here at the library. We have two copies of Grace, one that's just the book and one that also includes the CD if you wanna listen to it as you flip the pages. We hope you enjoyed our stories this week. We hope you have a fantastic time hanging out with your family and friends. Wash your hands, stay safe, we miss you guys.